Yo, what's going on? So we got another recap video from this morning's live stream on my main channel, Trades by Matt. It happens every day, Monday to Friday at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. However, if you're watching this live uh, or today, I guess, uh, no streams on Wednesday, July 3rd or July 4th. Uh, it's a half day in the market and then the market's closed. I'm taking a holiday and enjoying it, uh, but was able to find two trades. We were, had a really weird market today. Very slidey, 100 points down, 100 points right back up and like candle by candle. Uh, so I was being very patient, found one cheap trade and then another cheap trade. So execute off both of those. We're going to recap those right now. Uh, I am trading my Apex accounts. Uh, they are fresh. Uh, I'm at like $500 of profit across those 20 PAs. You can use code TBM for 80% off if you're interested. Uh, it will always give you the best deal available with code TBM. So let's go and dive into the recap. Yo, good morning. How are we doing? <clears throat> Welcome. Happy uh, Monday. Happy Monday. Happy holiday week. Hopefully you had a good weekend. I had a little bit of a long weekend. I took Friday off and it was great. Um, the golf itself was... Uh, <sighs> shot 98. I was using uh, all of the course. Too much of the course with the uh, grass that you don't actually want to pay for. You know what I mean? Uh, one, one using the good grass on, on a lot of those shots, but it's all good. Shot 98. Uh, last time I was there, I played with Hayden in the chat. I don't know if he's here yet or not. And uh, I shot a... I don't remember what I shot. I think I shot like a 93 or 92 or something like that. And then I shot a 98 this last time. TJ shot a 94. I want to say or 93 93 or 94 said so tj won but overall it was great to be outside and uh even with a disappointing golf score it's hard to be disappointed when you're outside playing golf all right markets are open i know i'm a little late so vwap open uh not my favorite uh, looks like Friday we had a really nice push and then slap. I don't really know what ended up happening there. Uh, but from the highs to lows, it was a 400 point slap. I don't know if that was like the overnight highs or what. Um, or if it was just a really dirty close. Not sure. But a VWAP open, uh, coming into yesterday's value or low 950s. I feel like we've been at the 950s for so long now. Um, even though it's just been, you know, three or four days. Got overnight lows at 900. Overnight highs at, uh... 2020 so 120 points top to bottom there but we do have a vwap open which typically is pretty choppy right off the bat we'll see i got uh 15 minutes to figure out the price action anyways if you haven't chat make sure you press the thumbs up button down below uh news wise today we've got uh manufacturing pmi 845 and then ism at nine o'clock so ism nine o'clock uh pmi uh 845 Bottom's going to be lower on Friday. Yeah, I think a lot of people will probably just rotate Thursday into Friday, to be honest. Like Thursday holiday and just take the rest of the week off, make it a long weekend. There's a WIC test that just fired off. Uh, I don't like it right around BWAP. BWAP is too much, too close to me. Uh, not to mention, I don't trade the first 15 minutes of the day. Worth noting. Uh, we are making the whole v, uh, uh, WIC test spiel into its own video from maybe Thursday stream or whenever that was. So y'all asked for that to be chopped up and put into TVM theories and we're doing it. Volume's going to be lower on Wednesday more than likely too. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's why I'm golfing on Wednesday. It's because I'm fully expectant to, for it to be lower. And if it's not, then I'll just say, wow, that's abnormal and move on with my life. <laughs> All right, it's lit, huh? Perfect. Let's read the dad joke. I've got two of them for you. This is for the weekend, uh, June uh, 29th and 30th, the end of the month. What did one wall say to the other wall? I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> July 1st, Monday. Today's dad joke. I only seem to get sick on weekdays. I must have a weakened immune system. <laughs> I got four minutes on green light of trade. Uh, we got liquidity downside still. It's hard for me uh, after Friday, man. We're obviously hugging a lot of volume here at 920 to like 950, 960 for all that volume is. But after that Friday, when we got up and we put in a wick up here, it's hard for me to not envision a little bit more downside. But who knows? Maybe we still just chop it out. Very possible. Delta's just kind of doing its thing. A little heavy, but overall just kind of doing its thing. I went to the range twice last week. Was hitting my... Was hitting everything pretty well. 
and was feeling really good because like I actually went to the range, which I never do. And then I go to the actual course and it's just a shit show. <laughs> a chunky shit show. But I guess that's just golf. Yeah, the Wick test actually played pretty nicely, huh? 55 to 80, 30 points. And you had to take like 25 of heat. Oof. Man, we're just melting off. I wanted to kick up into the 20s again. We'll see. We have news in 10 minutes. Um, we're just kind of sucking through all this liquidity right now. This is what it looks like. We're finally breaking out of yesterday's uh, or last week's uh, little micro range in like the 20s or whatever that was. Kind of makes sense. We're accelerating a little bit. Um, I mean, rotation back down to 76, I think would be very, very interesting. Honestly. Like 80 points lower. Can you take a second and explain the blue line algo? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to explain the blue line algo. It's when you get into a trade, a blue line pops up where your average entry price is, right? And then uh, that tends to be the strongest support of all time if it's against you or the strongest resistance of all time if it's against you. If you're long and price slaps through your, your entry price, getting back above it is one of the strongest things that you'll ever experience in trading. <laughs> it's really just a joke. The blue line algo is a meme. I just call it the blue line algo because there's a blue line that appears on my screen and it's always the strongest support or resistance <laughs> of all time. <laughs> Why don't you just change the color of the line? Right. Well, blue line algo is just cemented at this point. Whether I change the color or not, it wouldn't change anything. I just read tomorrow's joke. I just find my, I just like my eyes just go down there and that's like, what are those words? And then I read it and then I am cooked for the next day's joke, but at least it's a good one. All right. We got news, everybody. 30 seconds. Uh, you can see the books opening up. We got a lot of uh, the juice on the books is 15 blocks. So that's something to note. <laughs> it's only 15s on there. But everything is opening up. Uh, we got uh, ISM coming in here in just a couple seconds. 40 uh, in uh, 15 seconds. Cancel all orders. <laughs> there we go. Here comes news. Another WIC test. What is Delta doing? Delta honestly looks pretty decent. This wick test is kind of interesting. The downside is it's 20 points. I don't really want to give it. I don't really want to give it 20 points. At this point, I mean, pushing, uh, yeah, 30s to 50s, value area low, point of control, VWAP, order block, 30. All of that's fairly interesting to the upside. And Delta looks pretty good. It looks ripe for the continuation of the ripping, so. I mean, we're 80 points off the lows. We're doing pretty well. Doesn't even feel like it, honestly. Stuck in between the overnight lows and yesterday's close. Middle of the range. Middle of the defined range so far, which is uh, high and low of the session. Delta's going fairly flat. Maybe a little downside, but nothing crazy. Hanging out 900 as well. Again, I, to me, I, I like the idea of trading 30s to 50s a little bit more, personally. But maybe we just rotate. I have no idea. All right, trying to, there's the thirties push. Okay. This is step one that I was talking about. I'm happy with this test of 32. Now the question is, do we rotate v, uh, VWAP? Okay. Doji off of the order block. This is interesting. Uh, if we snap 900, uh, overnight lows again, like get black below this back, below, back below here. I think it gets significantly more interesting for the shorts. Uh, cause I like, I like the rejection. I like the spot where we rejected. I like that we closed at a doji. I like that we're selling off off of it. And now that we're cracking it, I, I like that as well. The problem now is that we're just kind of accelerating without a pullback. I mean, this is a 50 point candle with no pullback at all. It's just really hard. It's really hard for me to get into stuff like that. Like we have a 50 point downside move. The movement is great. It's doing everything that you kind of expect, but you just kind of, I kind of want a little bit more wiggle in the middle of it. Wiggle in the middle. I was about to say that rhymed, and then I realized it did not rhyme at all. <laughs> Why didn't you take the 32? Because Delta looked fan, like, looked really good. I'm not going to short when Delta's looking like that, just because I think it's going to stop. I mean, we had a massive ripper, and it just because it's at a level I care about, if we're ripping like crazy and Delta is correlating with that rip, I'm not going to step in front of that train, especially with VWAP 10, 15 points higher, which I think we could uh, magnet up into. But we ended up rejecting it so it is what it is i mean we're just about to go run the lows in one candle off of 30s sick almost a 100 point move 80 points off of that okay 
Very nice. No pullback. 80 points, no pullback. Let's go run the lows. No pullback. Sick. I mean, yeah, pretty aggressive candle. Uh, pretty aggressive two candles. 90 points between the two of them. Almost 100 points here. And then just on this candle alone, we're at uh, over 80 points. Top to bottom. And a run of the lows. Man, that 30 level really played. Uh, did anybody take the 30s? I know I was like talking about it, but I obviously I didn't have the balls to take it with Delta looking like it was. But uh, I mean, we talked about it from right around here all the way up and then it ended up just tagging it. <laughs> Very nicely selling off. When was the last time we saw a five minute 100 point candle? Probably recent. I just can't remember, but it probably was like last week or something. <laughs> it just feels like so long ago. All right. Um, okay. Untested wick technically, uh, at the lows at 41. Delta's a little spooky here. Like, I feel like 41 rejects because I'm not going to take it, which of course means it's going to actually like slap it. Cause that's just the way it works. But, uh, Delta's a little spooky. Never really sold off super, super hard there. And kind of catching a bid, uh, like buyers are kind of stepping up. It looks like. Okay, so now we have a uh, 812. This is a 40 point pusher, top to bottom on this candle. About to be another 50 point candle. I mean, rejecting 60s is kind of interesting. Or 72. Volume, volume well. Little consolidation both times. 74 maybe. And probably just a, just about a 50% 50 uh, 50 retrace as well. But again, I just don't know if I want to step in front of it. I mean, like everything feels very heavy. I feel like I should be looking for shorts uh, just based off current price action. But like this is a. This is not not a ripper. <laughs> Top to bottom on this candles. I mean, 60 points. It's uh, it's not nothing. Not nothing at all. Are we just going to rerun all of it? Are we going to retrace that? Holy moly. 100 points down, 100 points up. Jeez. Just gonna be a wick test? I mean, dude, imagine that. I guess that's technically on the table, too. Like, trade 08. Give it a few points. It's not a, not a terrible idea. Right now, rejecting the bottom of that range. That 900 area, 903. Overnight lows, etc. But we got one minute left. I mean, it, it looks like we just retraced the whole thing. Which is just so savage. I'm so happy I didn't take the 41 short off that wick. I just had a feeling, man. Like Delta was just being a little. What I I think I used the word spooky. Spooky is the right word there. Like a big ass sell off, and then Delta just never really responded super well, and then we just literally, literally rerun the entire thing, even more than the last candle because we put in excess. Kind of nasty. All right, we got seven minutes till initial balance is set. Initial balance currently is uh, 811 to 985, so 170 points. Um, the last 15 minutes has been pretty wild, I would say. 100 point slap into new lows, followed by over 100 point ripper right back up into volume, and then pushing VWAP. Man, really just kind of aggressive movement. I understand the shorts here. I don't really understand this long back up into the range, to be honest, unless it was just a lot of people getting caught short and just propelling us even further because movement was down. We ran new lows and then just immediately ate at 100 points. That's just pretty aggressive. There's no really other way to put it other than it's pretty aggressive. I, th I find that I find this very hard to trade. I liked the 30 sell off. I called out that level. I liked the sell off here. There just was no reentry really. And then the push back up was just aggressive. I find this very hard to trade from 916 on very hard. And then even all of nine o'clock, basically the short that I wanted Delta was pushing up into the sell off was fast. I don't know, man. It's tough. All right. Coming into the overnight lows. I think this is an interesting spot. Um, playing the bottom bottom ish of this range. Something like this uh, would be kind of interesting to me, but uh, it's already back up to point of control. I was looking for the move back up to point of control. I'm still somewhat interested in this. Uh, if we come back down, fill it out. Um, risking six and a half points for the return back to VWAP. But I don't think I get filled here. We'll see. Like pushing back up into 28, I think looks pretty solid. But I don't want to take the trade at, at 15 because then I have to give it almost 20 points. 
like i still need to have this be this is my area of invalidation either way so i either take a cheap trade near it can't get my sizing right here uh i either take a i either take a cheap trade near it or it pushes right all right looks like i get i'm not gonna say anything looks like i get filled there we go a little bit of sellers coming through insta stop out if i'm gonna get stopped out i want it to happen fast that was fast 130 per account uh, it's minus 2700 2800 across all 20 but it's wrong immediately which is what i prefer i got out at what 97 and it immediately dumped to 77 instant 20 points down after that i stand by that stop out i stand by the whole trade actually buyers were looking okay we held on to it for a second i get stopped out stops 20 points immediately back up into the range but like i'm not willing to let it wiggle 20 points there on to the next what are the lines on your five minute chart above and below the bars this is a volume profile and you'll notice i mean it just moved it moves as the session progresses the yellow line is pointing control it's where the most volume has been conducted during the day at what price point the most volume has been conducted during the day so right now the most volume which can you can see it through the histogram as well on the side but the most volume has been done at 9 15. uh and then 70 percent of the volume has been conducted from 72 to 51. so this is just showing the range where 70 percent of the volume has been conducted a lot of times when you break out of value area if it's a chop day you typically bounce volume you bounce value area to value area uh but if you get out of it it typically can move kind of fast because there's just not a lot of volume that's been conducted down there not a lot of interest and then the red and green lines on my one minute chart are initial balance high and low it's the first hour so 8 30 to 9 30 high and low of the session again just acts as resistance and then these these over here on the side is the dom visualized so these are just active orders on the market by price it's the exact same thing we see on the dom just on the chart it's just easier to see it all in one area as opposed to having to scroll up and down on the dom or the order book whatever you want to call it is there an, an indicator name for the dom on the chart visualized uh some some will call it the active bid ass some will call it level two uh like level two on chart um some will call it bid ask on chart just depends on your platform etc some platforms don't show it at all or won't allow you to show it you have to have the right data for it as well how do you keep yourself from taking lousy trades some days it's easier than others that's for sure days like this it's a lot easier for me when volatility is incredibly high and i don't see a whole lot of setups uh, it's pretty easy for me to sit back and do nothing because I don't see anything and I know I know the repercussions if I don't like if I just start clicking buttons I know the repercussions because volatility is pretty high all right there's pointing control again we're right into those wicks again uh we have buyers but I don't love it it is pretty clearly 90s to 9 910s at this point it's just very hard to take this trade because if you buy this the odds of it sweeping the one time you buy it, I feel like are very high. And like, it is a cheap trade to take this. Just straight up, it's a cheap trade. The, the question is like, how much wiggle room do you give it? Delta's holding up. We've been buying off the bottom of the range over and over again. Got a new candle opening up right now too. Like we're gonna blow through these wicks at some point, in my opinion. Maybe it happens right now, maybe not, but wicks get run. And we got a lot of wicks from 913 to 920. We have like what 40 minutes worth of wicks this gets cleaned up at some point in my opinion might be right now it is right now well i wanted to buy the bottom of the range was not given the opportunity and we go flush the top of the range it's nice to see it play out i mean delta looked good at the lows i missed it by three points and then we run 40 points but a lot of juice higher like i like the longs it's just like finding an entry is challenging part here i could probably like realistically this time of day 10 20 probably could get away with like a 30 buy and have you know a 22 stop or something ideally it's like probably i mean it's 26 by probably was it of a little one minute order block but playing around there 28s 29s 26s 29 somewhere around there even prior open on the five minute 31 and then giving it you know 10 11 points it's just like how much do you trust it right that's the biggest question right now is how much do you trust it and we've been pretty slidey so far so the answer is hard there okay so like that's the interest that's like an interesting test Delta's a little heavy though and like the retest of pointing control that untested wick 
all that stuff is interesting but then the question is are we just gonna get back into the range this would be the wick test i'm gonna give it a little shot very quick it's either gonna work or it's not because we might just be sucking right back into the bottom of the range 900s right but the retest of point of control i like I like all this juice up above too. I think, I think I just, the question is when do, when is it going to get run? Right? That's the big question. How long is it going to take? I like the little sweep. I like that little sweep of the lows. I like the pop of the prior high. And I like the push into VWAP that we're seeing and yesterday's close. If we can catch some more legs. Go ahead and move that to break even. All right, there we go. That's a full 10 points. Currently $57 per account, 1100 bucks. Counts are 570 in profit, 580 in profit on some. But I like that trade. Um, I'm happy with that trade. I got nothing bad to say about the trade. Nothing. It's just, it was a trade. A trade that made sense. The untested wick, point of control on the flush through VWAP, bouncing volume. Pretty high probability trade. Yeah, and then I moved my top up break even when it was uh, up to 120. I think it was either 120 or 130 in the money when I went ahead and moved up to break even. It was basically when we popped that prior high, I went ahead and moved to break even. So we had the sweep and then the pop of prior high. That to me is a sign that we either continue. And if we don't, then we're going to sweep it super hard. So move my stop break even. All right. Nice continuation as well. I'm just not willing to hold that longer than yesterday's close and view op. I think it, this is like a perfect spot where we potentially roll over and we push really hard. So I'm going to take the high probability that we roll over, right? But not high probability. I'm going to take the, the in your face exit at VWAP, which happens to line up with my 10 points. But like we either roll over really hard off of yesterday's close and VWAP and we go back into the range that we had just traded or we push really hard and we end up pushing really hard. And I think we go rotate 970s. I really want us to at least. That's a better way to say that. I want us to rotate 970s and IBH to be perfectly honest, because that's where all the liquidity is. That's where the trades are wanting to happen, right? So I want us to continue up. I think it makes a lot of sense for us to do it. That's what I want to see. Yeah.